Hello everyone and welcome back. In the last session, we learned the procedure of decoder's expansion. There, starting with some simple examples, by the end, we even derived a generalized formula. Today, we will first observe the drawback of that procedure and thereafter, we will also try to come up with an alternative approach of decoder expansion. So, without any further ado, Let's get to learning. Now, during the last session, if you all remember, using the generalized formula, we made a 7 to 128 decoder with 3 to 8 decoders. And how did we do that? Well, firstly, this was the modified configuration and this was the formula to find out the number of decoders of all the levels. Since M is 128 and N is 8, according to the modified configurations. Therefore, total number of levels can be derived from ceiling of log m base 2 divided by log n base 2. We know log m base 2 is 7 and log n base 2 is 3 because m and n are 128 and 8 respectively. Now, 7 by 3 is actually 2.333 and applying ceiling to that gives us 3. Clearly, there will be three levels. So, the number of decoders in each level following this formula is this, right? Basically, in the first level, we need 16, in the second, 2, and 1 decoder in the last one. Total 19 3 to 8 decoders are used to construct a single 7 to 128 decoder. Let's now observe the actual organization to acquire a broader perspective, shall we? Now, the number of levels and the number of decoders required in each level are going to be our guide in this. Now, it is a 7 to 128 decoder which has an enable line, 7 input lines starting from I6, I5, I4 till I0. Coming to the output lines, there are 128 of them. So, if it starts from O0, O1 and so on, we will have the last one as O127. Let's now dive into the internal architecture, shall we? As usual, we will begin construction from level 1 and as per our deduction, 16 3 to 8 decoders are needed to cover all the 128 output lines. So, these are the 16 level 1 decoders. Now, coming to level 2, two 3 to 8 decoders are supposed to be set there because for the enable line of these 8 decoders of level 1, these particular decoders output lines are gonna be responsible. And these remaining 8 decoders enable lines will be controlled by the output lines of this particular decoder. Now, in the last one, that is level 3, as per our derivation, one more 3 to 8 decoder is required. Now, think about it. We are using this one to control the enable lines of these two decoders of level 2, which can be done using these two output lines O0 and O1, and the rest are left out as they are. Now, observe. In order to control just O0 and O1, we will feed the most significant bit of the input sequence that is I6 through I0 of the decoder of level 3. Basically, when I0 gets 0 as input, O0 will be activated and when 1 is given to I0, O1 will get activated. Now, in the second level, both the decoders are responsible for the enable lines of the 8 different 3 to 8 decoders of level 1 each. And both of those require 3 inputs. Therefore, the next 3 bits of the input sequence, that is I5, I4 and I3, are given as inputs to the input lines of these two. Finally, in the first level, if you notice, all of the 16 decoders are responsible for 8 output lines each. So, the last 3 bits of the input sequence, that is I2, I1 and I0, are given as inputs 
to the input lines of these all 16 decoders of level 1. Most importantly, the enable line of this entire organization will be fed into this enable input of this 3 to 8 decoder of level 3. So, this sees the entire organization. Impressive, right? Now, looking at the organization, one can easily notice that although the decoders of both the levels 1 and 2 are being used to their fullest capacity, the decoder of level 3, on the other hand, is not. Apart from these two output lines, the rest are left unused. So, using a decoder of this configuration is actually wastage in here. We could have reduced the cost if we had used something else, that is, a different decoder with a different configuration. Since we need a decoder to handle the enable lines of only these two decoders of level 2, a simple 122 decoder will be sufficient as well as cost effective for this construction. The output O0 will control this enable line and the output O1 will be in charge of the enable line of this decoder and both of these will actually be controlled by the input line I6 that is the most significant bit of the input sequence. Finally, the enable line of this entire organization will be given to this 122 decoder's enable input. So, with this organization, we can actually save the cost and reduce the wastage, especially with this last decoder of the last level. Let's now try out another approach for expansion of decoder. Suppose, we are going to construct a 4 to 16 decoder using two 3 to 8 decoders. Now, in a 4 to 16 decoder, there will be four input lines starting from I3 to I0. And the 16 output lines are O0, O1, O2, O3 till O15. Internally, in level 1, we have 16 lines to cover. So, using two 3 to 8 decoders, all these 16 lines can be covered. Basically, the first one will cover the output lines from O0 to O7 and the second one will cover the remaining, that is O8 to O15. Now observe, all these output lines will be activated for different combinations of the input sequences of I3, I2, I1 and I0. And we all know, with 4 variables, we get 16 combinations starting from 0, 0, 0, 0 till all 1s, that is 1, 1, 1, 1. Now, notice the sequences considering the input bits I2, I1 and I0. These two set of sequences are identical, aren't they? Therefore, the input lines of I2, I1 and I0 should be given to the input lines of both the decoders of level 1. Now, what about the next level? Honestly, if we reconsider the instruction of construction, we were supposed to construct this 4 to 16 decoder using two 3 to 8 decoders and we have already used them to cover all the 16 output lines, haven't we? Now, allow me to bring your attention to the most significant input bit, that is I3. For the output lines O0 to O7, it's 0 and for the remaining output lines, it's 1. That means, for this set, it's 0, whereas for this set, it's 1. So, instead of any other decoder in level 2, if we feed I3 through a NOT gate to the first decoder, that is, if we feed 0 through I3, Due to this particular NOT gate, it will be converted to 1, enabling this particular decoder which actually will represent this particular set of I3. And if we feed I3 as it is to the second decoder, due to input 1 through I3, this decoder will be enabled for this set of 1s of I3. So, this is how using two 3 to 8 decoders and a simple NOT gate we can construct this 4 to 16 decoder. By the way, we could have constructed this very 4 to 16 decoder in another way. 
In the next level, that is the level 2, we could have used another 122 decoder as this will be able to control these two decoders of level 1. Here, I3 will be fed to the input line of the 122 decoder. Now the output line O0 will be in charge of the first 3 to 8 decoder and the output line O1 will be responsible for the enable line of this 3 to 8 decoder. And the best thing about this organization is that we get our precious enable input back with this particular one. Let's observe another instance, shall we? Suppose we are to construct one 5 to 32 decoder using four 3 to 8 decoders. Now in a 5 to 32 decoder, we have an enable line, five input lines starting from I4, I3 to I0. Coming to the output lines, there are 32 starting from O0 to O31. Let's now get into the internal specifications. Observe, we are to use four 3 to 8 decoders. Now using four 3 to 8 decoders, we can cover four multiplied by eight, that is 32 lines. And these are the four 3 to 8 decoders, which will cover these 32 output lines. Among these, the first one will cover the output lines O0, O1 to O7. The second one will cover the output lines O8, O9 to O15. The third one is going to cover the output lines O16, O17 to O23. And finally, this fourth decoder will cover the output lines O24, O25, till O31. Basically, all these 32 output lines can be covered by these four 3 to 8 decoders of level 1. Now we need to think about a way of controlling these. So the best solution is to have another decoder of 2 to 4 configuration placed at level 2 making it in charge of all the enable lines of level 1 decoders. Now what about the input lines? We know the least significant three bits, that is I0, I1 and I2, will be given as input to the input lines of the four decoders of level 1. And the remaining two input lines, that is I3 and I4, will be given as input to the input lines of the 2 to 4 decoder of level 2. Finally, the enable line of the entire organization will be fed into this enable input. So if we give one as input to the enable line, this two to four decoder gets enabled. Now let me illustrate what will happen if we feed the input one zero zero one zero through the input lines. Now for this two to four decoder, the input is one zero and it will activate the output line O2 because 1 0 in binary means 2 in decimal, which in turn will enable the third 3 to 8 decoder of level 1. Now for this decoder, observe the input given through I2, I1 and I0 is 0 1 0. This will activate the output line O1, which actually is the output line O17. If you convert this input sequence 10010 into decimal, you will get the decimal value 17. So it's safe to say that this circuit is working just fine. Now let me show you something very interesting. This is the circuit that we just created and tested as well, isn't it? And from the experience that we gathered, we can state Using four 3 to 8 decoder, if we are to construct a 5 to 32 decoder, we will need one extra 2 to 4 decoder. Notice the pattern. 4 is actually 2 square. 3 to 8 is actually 3 to 2 cube. Interestingly, the configuration 5 to 32 can be expressed as 2 plus 3, 2, 2 raised to the power 2 plus 3. And finally, 2 to 4 is 2 to 2 square. Noticed anything? So in general, if we state 
with 2 raised to the power m, n to 2 raised to the power n decoders, if we construct a m plus n to 2 raised to the power m plus n decoder, we will require one extra m to 2 raised to the power m decoder. In other words, with 4 3 to 8 decoder, if we want to construct a 5 to 32 decoder, we will need another 2 to 4 decoder. All right, people, that will be all for this session. I hope that both the approaches of decoder expansion are clear to you now. Clearly, the second one actually saves cost and reduces the wastage. In the next session, we will learn some more about ROM's architecture. So, I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.